This is the KLH Audio Systems Dual Deck Audio CDR RW recorder. Um, the model number is CDR 1000. This was released probably around 2002, I think. Let me just check the. October 2002. And uh, there's some more information. Made in China, of course. So this one does have optical uh, for the CD recorder. You also can do a coaxial. Right now I have it hooked up to analog because I have my AV-55 Yamaha hooked up to this. So let me just explain what this exactly does. Um, this has two functions. This one allows you to copy a CD onto another CD. So what you would do is you would put your CD in here and this is the CDR recorder. And what you would do is uh, you would uh, pair, let me see if I can. So right now I have uh, basically a, a CD in there that you can record on. So what you would have to do is you could change the source. Okay, and then you have your option of selecting CD audio. You select that, you can go ahead and open up your CD player. You could put a, a disc there. And then you close it up. It takes a second because it's not the fastest. Okay. And all you gotta do is press record. You press the record button. You say yes. So you, the yes is record. So that's recording one track, copying the second track. I think I've got about maybe four tracks or five tracks in that little CD. So I'll give it a chance to record. So this is kind of like a little nifty CD burner if you don't want to go into your computer and record uh, or rip CDs and then burn them into a CD disc. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the, the type of disc that this these type of players use um, because they're not your regular computer data discs. So I'll go into that in a little bit. Machine of track four. Okay, so, uh, so there it's done. Um, if you were to uh, finalize so what you what would happen is the CD that you recorded on, which would be on this one, uh, you could play it on other CDs. When it's not finalized, you can only play it on playback here uh, because it needs to go through a process of uh, closing out the disc. But we are not going to finalize, so I'm going to go ahead and press no. So no would be back. So back. I kind of wanted to show uh, the music on this CD so let me just play that shut up and sit down so that is uh track one on this CD I'll go ahead and press stop okay so we're gonna do playback on this one now the nice thing about this one is that it does give you a display on all, of all your tracks. Um, I recorded some other tracks previously on this disc because it's, I've used it as a demo. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and start playing the first track. So it's gonna start on track six. So if we skip over to a little bit, let me skip over, see if I can go on to, okay, so that's the other track. 
That's the other track. So that would be the first function that, that this uses uh, if you want to just copy one disc into another. I'm going to go ahead and show the discs that are needed for uh, recording on, on a device like this. Okay, so uh, this is the CD that I was recording on earlier. This is a Berbatim uh, Music uh, CDR. So one of the first things that you should look at when you are purchasing CDs to be able to record on a device like this it has to be labeled as music CDR. Uh, regular data disks that you use to burn in your computer will not uh, work on players like this. And there's a special reason for that. From what I've heard on forums and online, basically uh, there's a special tax that was added to the sale of these CDs uh, in order for uh, music not to be stolen from other CDs. So basically when you bought these blank, there was a special tax added. Now, when you bought data disks, that tax did not apply. But the reason why it applied on this one is because it had the, these machines were built with uh, some type of decoder or something in the BIOS that prevented you from recording on data disks. So therefore, this disk has the data that or code that's needed to be able to record on it so that you can copy one CD from one to another. Uh, this was technology that was probably that was used in the early 2000s to prevent piracy um, or at least make people pay an extra tax for CDs like this. Um, but uh, I guess it didn't work in the long run because everyone had a computer and I honestly don't think that I know many people with, with one of these. So um, in the long run, it really didn't work out and I actually haven't been able to find these that often. Uh, this one, this one, I found a spindle of maybe about 20 CDs at, uh, at Walgreens about two years ago, and, uh, they were selling for about $14.99. So they're kind of pricey. Um, they're not that common to find. One day when I was scouring, uh, Goodwill, I did find a box of these. I actually found several boxes of these that say music CDR. And uh, this is multi-speed. Uh, the other one was also multi-speed 40X. Uh, so these also work on the machine. Um, I didn't pay a lot for them. I kind of tried my best to scratch up the, the label off of that. But I don't think I spent more than a dollar on this box. With, for a pack of five, it wasn't that bad because like I said, for a pack of 20, I ended up buying, paying like $14.99 plus tax. So these are very hard to find um, and uh, I, that's why I, I don't use this um, device very often because honestly, uh, sometimes I, I rather just use uh, Audacity. I would probably use this machine for burn, burning vinyl if you wanted to just make a CD of your favorite vinyl um, and play it in your car or something if your, your car still has a CD player. Uh, I would probably use it for that, but being that these discs are so expensive, um, I don't really use this very often. Um, I'll tell you my story about how I found this machine in a bit, but that's going to be one of the drawbacks if you if you were to purchase one of these. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just put the Burba Tim right back on the machine, and I'm going to close it up because I want to demo uh, recording off. Uh, off an amp. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, you want to go to your source if you want to switch between what you, where you want to record from. And I'm going to go ahead and change this to analog. Select. Okay, this is uh, this is just to select the correct input. I'm going to go ahead and switch on the, the radio. Okay, so I went ahead and just put a little bit of talk radio because I don't really want to get any copyright strikes. So I just I'm just gonna record something right off the radio. So like so like I said earlier, all you gotta do is press record. You say yes. 
the food that you have is going to come from? You didn't have uh, any idea of where, of what house you were going to be living in, what kind of house you were going to be living in. You didn't have any idea of, of uh, the clothing that you were going to be wearing. What I mean is you didn't have idea how you were going to, to obtain all of those things. You had no idea when you were 13. So that interference is just from my uh, my antenna. Did you choose I'm gonna go ahead and stop it. Did you choose to be negative? Yes, we're gonna stop it. Did you choose to be affirmative? And and and. Okay, I'll go ahead and switch the output back to VCR one because that's where I have this recording. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down uh, to the very last track. You didn't have any idea of where the food that you have is gonna come from. You didn't have uh, any idea of where, of what house you were gonna be living in, what kind of house you were gonna be living in. You didn't have any idea of, of uh, the clothing that you were gonna be wearing. Okay, so that is just recorded off the radio. Now the way I have it set up is uh, because I have it plugged into my amplifier where VCR1 uh, allows you to also record off a source of any of these other uh, sources. I could have like my vinyl, uh, my record player or my uh, turntable uh, selected and it could uh, start recording uh, onto the CD. That would probably be the most conventional way you could use it. Obviously, you could use the CD player or you can select an, an, an auxiliary device. If you have your 8-track player like I have back over there uh, and you want to plug it into this amplifier, you can go ahead and do that and then record with this device. So my story with this device uh, is kind of interesting. Uh, so uh, I go to thrift stores all the time and uh, I love uh, buying these machines because I feel that when they're left at a Goodwill, whoever owned them before has basically discarded them because they no longer have any use for them. Maybe they've transitioned over to digital music, which, you know, you don't really need uh, physical uh, media anymore. So uh, these things get thrown out or they get donated. Um, when you find stuff like this that uh, was probably very expensive when it first came out, you could just imagine that the person that bought it probably was well-to-do and uh, they got tired of having this in, in their house or in their garage, so they got rid of it. So uh, the original asking price for this was for about, I think about $35. And uh, I could see that like a lot of people passed on it because these disc drives, they weren't working. Uh, they were completely shut. Like I, I wouldn't be able to get them open. This one sort of works better, but it sometimes does this thing where, let's see if I can show you. It takes a second to get this thing out. So sometimes it'll do the whole, uh, I'm going in and I'm going out. See, it's doing it right now. But uh, both of these were completely closed. Like you couldn't get them to open. So. Basically, people were passing on it because both of these drives would not open. So uh, one day, uh, I think this happens every Thursday at Goodwill, they have this sale where certain items that are labeled a certain color are sold for a dollar. And that's, I could tell they do that just to clear off their inventory that's taking up space because they want to put in new stuff there. So uh, this machine was sitting there of that day and I grabbed it for one dollar. Yes, I paid one dollar for this. So um, I took it home and I knew that I could probably fix what was wrong with these doors because um, I've been able to fix Xboxes that had the same problem. And it's basically a belt that goes into the into the CD drive that needs to be replaced. Um, this is this machine is from 2002. So uh, the belts basically uh, lose their elasticity and they, they no longer uh, turn uh, the little motor that goes inside the drives to open it. So uh, what I ended up having to do is I had to take these apart. I had a couple of belts left over from the Xbox uh, fix that I did a couple of years ago. So I got those belts. I think I had like maybe uh, two spare belts. So I go ahead, I went ahead and put 
them on the drives and they worked much better. Uh, they were able to open and the actual laser of both of them worked fine. Uh, that was never a problem. So this has actually been one of the ones that worked the best for me. I've also owned a Phillips and that one uh, sort of worked. Uh, it could do the copying from one CD to another CD, but uh, I couldn't get it to record uh, off an amplifier. Uh, I don't know if it was some type of problem with maybe one of the capacitors inside. Uh, I'm not a super uh, smart person when it comes to uh, measuring capacitors and seeing if they're good or not. Uh, I'm sure I could if I had the right equipment, but I don't. I just have a multimeter and sometimes if I notice that a capacitor is leaking, I, I'm able to uh, replace it, but I'm not really sure how to tell uh, when capacitors are good or not. Um, so. But um, but this machine works great. I mean, I, I, it never gave me a problem. I, the only thing that it does is that door thing. But I mean, it's not really a big deal because it, it is able to close. Um, and I mean, I, th I think just as a cool factor, I think it's kind of nice to just own one of these. Because uh, you never know. I mean, maybe you're in a rush and you just want to burn a copy of your favorite vinyl record. You could hook this up and uh, record if you have plenty of those CDs that I mentioned. Um, but uh, anyhow, that is the KLH Audio Systems CDR-1000. Hope you enjoyed this video and uh, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a wonderful day.